every day, like, so I'll usually get there on a Wednesday. I'm assuming I'm not playing singles. So I'll get there Wednesday night. And then on Thursday, I'll just practice meds. Uh, we might do like one mixed game or two mixed games, but I think the best practice for mixed for me is meds. And oh. Okay, Adam Stone is back on my podcast, everyone. This is episode 46. Yo, we- I, I just I just love the progression. Like I had some, you had some real epic intros of me and now it's just Adam Stone is on the podcast. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meat and potatoes, bone dry. All That's I- right. And, and this is going to be the only time that I focus on me on this James Ignatowicz podcast, but I have to give a quick little spiel real fast, James. Unfortunately, it looks like the analyst position for commentary for 2024 is going to be a lot of players who are kind of in that odd situation with their contract where they are not going to make an MLP team or a PPA draw, and they're going to use those players for the analyst position. So unfortunately, that kind of knocks your boy off to the side, at least for 2024, and this is up in the air. So I wanted to talk briefly. We have the SoCal Hard Eights. I'm very involved with that MLP team. We are in the challenger division, but we have uh, 12 teams in the premier division, and I was going to put myself out there to possibly help out one of those premier teams. Now we we have a lot of them already established with their coaching and their GM. I could join that group or possibly uh, take over and be one of those two or both of those for a team. Uh, I think that my knowledge of the game of pickleball com- uh, combined with some of my poker skills in terms of analytical thought processes, uh, kind of suppressing the emotions, making the right decision in the moment. Uh, so some light game theory that, that I know about, uh, I think puts my resume pretty high, uh, to help out some of these teams. So I'm just throwing it out there on your platform, James, uh, give me a shout, any ownership groups of those premier teams that are looking for some help for the, either the 2024 draft or the 2024 season. Well, that's a little unfortunate. I hope at least they can, I hope Greg Dow is at least commentating. So it's someone, who, you know, it's, he's not going to be Adam Stone. I actually think Adam Stone is the best commentator. Um, and, you know, you don't have maybe the the toughest competition, right? We're not talking about the NFL where you've got people that are getting paid millions of dollars to do it. But um, in that very small pool with limited competition, I've always said I think Adam is either the best or he's in that conversation as top two, top three. So I think it's it's unfortunate that they have to get rid of you as the commentator, but I guess they got to have, you know, they got to put Greg to work in some capacity, right? They got to find a way to um, work Greg. I, I can't think of who else could be a good commentator. I'm sure there's some people that I'm not thinking of that would be great, right? But I think it's... Um, That's tough. I didn't know that. And I think you as a uh, just like a strategical mind for the game, you obviously listening to your commentating, you can tell that you know what you're talking about. And I think that that is uh, pretty rare in pickleball. There's not a lot of people who have been in pickleball for longer than two years, three years. You know, I came in two years ago. And at this point, I almost feel like a veteran. So I think that it's it's valuable because there are some GMs. I'm not going to name any names, but there's been some really questionable decision making that's gone on. And I think if you want somebody that isn't going to do something dumb, which is actually a privilege, Adam Stone might be your guy. So, <laughs> hey, well, my goodness, uh, that was that was a nice little follow up to my spiel there, James. And I, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, and, and this is still, it's not 100% for sure with the, with the commentary situation. I just know it's a very real option. And I think it, unfortunately for me, makes a bit of sense financially. And I can't imagine, you know, from this pool of players that there's not a, a handful of guys or gals that can give some quality uh, uh, commentary on the mic. So uh, we'll just kind of have to see how it plays out. It's all it's all up in the air, as we all know, uh, from a variety of perspectives with this merger. But uh, uh, appreciate those kind words, James. It's unfortunate that I'll be on the court because I actually think I would be pretty good. I think especially knowing the players, I think I would, you know, I'm not Adam Stone, but I would be I would be be a decent replacement, maybe. but I got to play. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you, you you got a lot of play left in that paddle, James. So you 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 don't worry about that for at least a decade, at least a decade. <laughs> um, yeah. So we no no real tournaments. We did a nice little recap of the uh, the San Clemente events on, on the previous pod. Uh, so uh, I have uh, some personal stuff uh, from you, James, that uh, some people might like to hear, and and of course some uh, in this very short off season of pickleball uh we'll, we'll talk about some uh some tweaks to your game and some th things that you've possibly been working on but uh i got pretty obsessed a while back i don't know why of watching people's daily routines on youtube got where it. i would see people that i respected or or i thought were very high in their field uh and then kind of talk about their routines and some of the things they do to to prep for whether it's business stuff athletic stuff whatever and James, you're at the top of your field. Uh, let's be very clear about that. So I wanted to know just a little bit of some of the daily stuff in terms of practice and also, you know, some of your your uh, uh, travel and uh, tournament days as well. So a standard day down in South Florida, don't have much going on. Maybe you got to do a James Ignatowicz podcast, but other than that, you're free. What does your practice day entail and what does it look like? Yeah, it's funny. I think... Um... <clears throat> This is going to be interesting because Anna, who's also at the top of her field in, in women's mm -hmm. double, she thinks that my daily routine is pretty insane just with, with how much, you know, with how intense I am, I guess, with how much stuff that I do. So it's, it's funny. It's really because I always feel like I need to be doing something and I don't want to get bored. I like suffer from crippling boredom. And um, <laughs> you know, so my, my routine is, is, is a lot, but usually I'll, right when I wake up, <laughs> The first thing I do is I'll get outside. I'll either go for like a short run or something just to get the blood flowing. I think it just makes me feel better. Like I just, after I run for 10 minutes or so or something, I just feel happier afterwards. So I'll do that. Then I'll foam roll for 20 minutes. Then I'll stretch for like 30 minutes. And after that, then I'll have some caffeine, you know, get, get really start to get going. And then I will, you know, take, take my supplements, and then I'll go to the gym. So I go to the gym, do like probably an hour and a half of stuff. So a lot of like compound movements. So I'm not necessarily doing bicep curls as much. Um, I'm sure you could probably tell by looking at me that I don't do those. But it's a lot of like, you know, bench pressing maybe or like squat jumps or pull ups, just anything that's compound. So like shoulder press or deadlift. Um, and then a lot of explosive stuff. So like plyometrics, medicine ball throws, a lot of quick, like short, quick bursts of energy. Because I think in pickleball, the most important thing is just your, you know, fast switch muscle fiber. So how quickly can you go from here to here super quick to like poach or hit an Ernie or something? You're never running for more than like five feet or six feet in pickleball, especially in doubles. So it's all that quick burst of energy. Then I'll have some lunch. Then I'll go practice. So I'll practice for like two hours. I like to lift and work out before I practice because I think it really, for whatever reason, after I work out, I feel more energy. So I think I really feel kind of like I want to practice how I would play. So I really kind of prime my day so that when I'm practicing is at my highest point of energy. So I'll probably have like a little more caffeine actually before I practice. Um, then I'll practice, then I'll recover. So foam roll and stretch again. Um, I'll do that twice a day, every day. And then I eat more food. I like to eat a lot of food. I eat really healthy too. It's, I have the most boring diet. Um, like I don't eat any processed sugar. I don't eat fried food really. Um, I don't eat a lot of like white bread. Uh, it's, it's a boring diet and I've been on both sides cause I used to eat like crap. I used to eat whatever I wanted and it's, um, I'm still not sure if it's worth it. Everybody, when they eat healthy, they're like, Oh, it's so <laughs> worth it. You know, like, like I, you see it on YouTube. It's so stupid. All these people are like, oh, I, I've been eating gluten free for a year. It's life changing. I, I've been eating really healthy for a year now. Definitely changed my life, but I don't know if it's for the good or the bad. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. It's the same. I mean, it's so same thing as something else. Uh, but anyways, I don't really know. Uh, but I will say that, yeah, after that, then I'll, that's pretty much it. I just, I, I do recovery for an hour, hour and a half a day. Um, I'll lift for an hour and a half and I'll practice for two hours. And outside of that, nothing else really to do. I'll just, maybe I'll do some stuff like I'll do a lot of virtual coaching, make sure to sign up. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> Boom, my man. Well, there you go. Way to work that in there. <laughs> Y'all watch. I like to watch pickleball for like, you know, I just watch it for my own enjoyment. I have a fun time watching. I, I watch for about an hour a day, just for like, not even to study, like just fun matches. So there's so many, it's fun because I know the players too. That's what's the cool thing about it. Like you watch the NFL, the NBA, you don't know who actually hates each other. <laughs> what I mean, but I know like the fun, fun matches that I want to see. So I'll do that too. So that, that's about it. Well, wow, that, that is, One more. Oh, please continue. This is an interesting thing. I sleep almost, I sleep like nine and a half hours a night almost 10. Sometimes I'll sleep 10. I sleep as much as I can. I, I think I tried to sleep less. I tried to wake up early, but I've found that if, if I'm working hard, if I'm eating healthy, doing all the right things, I really am at like peak performance when I don't stop myself from, from sleeping. So I don't wake myself up. I have no alarm. I'll just sleep as long as my body needs to sleep. So that's, that's the last thing. Well, that's, that's one of, uh, Adam Stone's keys to success is to wake up naturally, James. We we don't alarms, you know, you're traveling a bit. It's a tournament day. You know, you got, you got to do what you got to do. It kind of throws off your schedule. But when I'm, when I'm home and I'm primed, I'm looking for double digit sleep hours. Uh, a nice little 10 spot is a great recovery. And James, that's, that's a pretty full day that you have there. Um, and I would say it's, more impressive than I was thinking. So good for you uh, with the clean eating, all that good stuff. So do you, is there any thought process to delaying your caffeine uh, a couple hours in the day? Uh, I've heard that that is also good and prevents some crashes later in the day. If you can delay it around 90 minutes or so uh, in the morning. Yeah, you did your research. That is exactly what I do. So I think it's, um, there's like, you know, science stuff like adenosine receptors, basically, yeah. To put it simply, it's like when you wake up, you still feel groggy because there's built up adenosine, which is just like the, the chemical version of tiredness that's in your system. And if you wait for that to clear out before you have caffeine and the function of caffeine is blocking adenosine receptors. So if you don't wait for it to clear out and then you block it by having caffeine right after you wake up at 2 p.m. when that caffeine wears off, that those old adenosine receptors will flood in, you're going to fall asleep, you're going to crash. So also, if you if you wait 90 minutes, the caffeine works better, you just feel more, it feels stronger. And I, that's just my own, and it's just personal, like I'll, uh, if I've had to wake up at like, you know, and have caffeine five minutes after, I feel like it works. But if I wait 90 minutes, I really feel wired. Um, so yeah, yeah. no, and I, and I, I think that's right. So it's the caffeine doesn't actually give you energy it blocks what makes you tired. So kind of the same thing, but not quite the same thing. And also in terms of eating. So you had quite a few activities before you ate. Uh, did you miss your breakfast or do you like to do a light workout uh, before you put any uh, calories in your system? Yeah, I that's just my, um, I don't have any like scientific reason for doing it, but I work out better when I'm fully fasted, when I have no food in my body. And it's, I don't really know why that is, um, but I've always felt like more energetic. So I actually eat right after I work out and I'll eat a lot right after I'll work out because I want to make up for it. But yeah, I'm not eating until 1130, sometimes 12. So yeah. So it's a little kind of, uh, kind of a block of eight hours or so intermittent fasting a bit. Uh, if you, when, when you don't eat in the morning, maybe not as technical as some other people, but a little bit of that going on. And also uh, something that is good for delaying that caffeine. I also researched that uh, getting some natural light very quickly when you wake up, uh, that little light run that you were talking about, I heard had some really nice benefits for your sleep later in the day as well. So those those are all kind of connected. So James, you're you're just doing it, man. You're eating healthy, eating clean, doing the right things, putting, I mean, I'm talking... I think from what I have here, we're talking maybe four or five hours of non-court body work uh, that, that you're doing uh, in the day. And I think that that is a great note for aspiring pros or, or just high-end amateurs uh, that are looking to maximize performance. Well, that sun in the morning thing was like, that's actually the most life-changing thing that I've had. It's crazy. Um, I I had so much trouble sleeping. And this was even, this was like a year and a half ago, like I had already quit. 
all the extra, like no alcohol and all that stuff. And I was still having trouble sleeping. Um, and I didn't know why it was. I thought I was just too amped up. I thought I wanted it too bad. I, I just wasn't sure what it was. And then I started getting sun in my eyes in the morning and I'm going to sleep really well. Like almost every night I just go right to sleep and there is science for it. I think it's like sets off your circadian rhythm and then melatonin gets re released in your brain naturally. Um, but like that was, it's, it really works because I'm, it helps my sleep so much. And with how kind of amped up I am all the time, I think my energy is really high caffeine. It's, I go to sleep right away. So. Yeah. And that's uh, really important as well to note the, the alcohol. So alcohol you basically, some people think it helps sleep because you just pass out, kind of. It's not clean sleep, and it's it's not that deep REM sleep. And uh, I've had, uh, read quite a few articles about how alcohol, while sometimes you fall asleep quickly when you drink during night, it's not the clean, uh, recuperative sleep that you really need, especially if you're an athlete. Yeah, it's tough because alcohol is great. You know, that's just... The <laughs> I, I haven't had a drink in two years um, and I don't drink at all. And it's just like processed sugar. I don't know if it's worth it or not. I, I'm still thinking of it because I, you know, I mean, obviously it's better to not drink, but uh, if you do, I, I wouldn't blame people that, that do because it's, it's tough. I, I mean, it's a great alcohol is great in moderation, whatever. I'll say the right thing here. But it's it's, it, it, it's the, the issue for me is the moderation. So if I keep it in a good range, I mean, I'm 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 a people guy. I, I get energy from people. I get kind of buzzed up and happy, uh, you know, just after a drink or two. But sometimes I get a little carried away in that social setting. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, kind of finding that range that's good for you, usually in the one to three drink range uh, it, it is best. And let's be clear, alcohol is a fantastic social lubricant and really really uh makes a lot of situations more enjoyable uh even though it does have some pitfalls but that's life right yep um okay here so what do we have well that was good we got deep right there we get we did some real uh we talked about you had your little whatever you're blocking with your caffeine and we talked about circadian rhythms i mean that's that's legit stuff james uh okay and how about this for for some pickleball travel what what does pickleball travel look like for you? How early are you getting to events? Are you like a frequent flyer guy that like puts in your number and gets all the rewards? Or do you just wait till 24 hours before and just rip it for like $1,000 for your flight? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. You know, that's one of my biggest weaknesses. I just, I have no fleek, frequent flyer. I don't know what's going on. I, I just booked the flight like two days before, three days before. That's in 2024. That's my resolution. I'm going to book my flights like at least a week in advance, two weeks in advance. I, I don't know. Um, no, I, I probably when it comes to travel, the one thing I'm really bad at is, is booking flights. I have no airline. I know some people are like they've got airlines that they're associated with. Like um. I have nothing. I'm just, I just go on Google and I look at the flight and I just press the button, whatever price it is. I just have to live with that. Yeah. And let's, let's be clear. I've said this before on the pod, James, we do not get together and rehearse any of this. And I just had a feeling you were one of those guys, James. And I was, I was right on point with that one. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, so are you like, a? uh, well now you're, you know, you're a little more, uh, financially stable, but are you like a, were you a host? Stay with the host family early, an Airbnb and guy, a, a hotel guy. What does it look like? All hotels. I think um, right when, well, I mean, like, yeah, so they, they basically hook me up and I just get the hotel. I think the Airbnbs can get a little messy uh, staying with hosts. Uh, I did that a few times and it's OK, but I think the cleanest way to do it is just stay at a nice hotel. It's a little more expensive, but um, luckily now I can handle it. So I just do that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, when, when I first started, hosts were almost a necessity with, with some of the early tournament prize pools. But I think that optimally, hotel is best because you just have less other things that could possibly get in the way. Sometimes when you have a host, you get one that kind of leaves you alone, some that really kind of wants to get in there and talk to you. And then, of course, you know, with the Airbnb, with a couple other players, you know, you never know exactly what you're going to get. So I think the safest route is hotel. 
uh, it makes a lot of a lot of sense to me. And also, uh, I mentioned the getting to the tournament early. And are those whatever Wednesday or Thursday, if you're not playing singles on a standard tournament, do those uh, days look similar to your practice days when you're you're back home in South Florida? Yeah, every every day, like so, I'll usually get there on a Wednesday. Um, assuming I'm not playing singles. So I'll get there Wednesday night and then on Thursday, I'll just practice men's. Uh, we might do like one mixed game or two mixed games, but I think the best practice for mixed for me is men's. And oh. yeah, I think it's just the highest quality game. It's just the truth. And I think after I play men's, I go play mixed and I just feel like, oh, this is way slower. It just feels easier. So I'll play a men's game on Thursday. Um, I'll still work out on I still work out every day just in some capacity, but it'll be lighter, obviously, before the tournament. And, uh, yeah, I get there Wednesday. Sometimes for MLPs, I'll get there three days before or two, two at least two days before. For MLPs, gotcha. So a little extra, uh, not your standard partner, a couple extra teammates. So it make, makes, uh, makes sense to get to the team event a little bit earlier so you can get the that court time and those touches with that player. Uh, it's so fun. I mean, I think wreck at MLPs is so fun. Like, like me. And oh, oh, yeah. I mean, that's my Super Bowl. I I, I don't compete anymore. <laughs> so to like show up Monday and play two or three days of high level wreck uh, is a real joy for me. And it's it's nice because a lot of the other teams only have two or three. Like someone had a prior commitment or whatever. So there's always a spot for me to kind of squeeze in and, and get a good game. And that's I, th I think that's pretty pretty cool and pretty exciting stuff. Um, so we, th this is a mini break here in the kind of December, I guess, I guess the, the masters is only like the second week of January. So very short break. Are you, we know that you were always working on the back of the court in the transition zone. Are you working on anything specific, like a, an attack, a combination, maybe something specific to partnering with Matt or partnering with Anna in this couple weeks that you have back home? Yeah. So, well, to, yesterday I just worked on, um, I had a guy who's like a lower level pro. That's one of the best things about Boca, by the way, is there's so many guys who are higher than 5-0. Like within, you know, 10 minutes of me, there's like 15 guys that'll just drill with me that you've never even heard of that are like 5.5 dupers or like 5.8 dupers. It's just a ton. And they'll do whatever I tell them to do. You know, it's all about me. It's, it's perfect. So I've got a guy yesterday. I had him hit overheads at me. So he was at the kitchen. I stood at the baseline. This is just to work on my defense. Because I think my my fifths have gotten better for sure. Like my transition has gotten better. My thirds have gotten better, especially with the power of air. It's a little softer. But I think my defense, my scrambling defense can get better for sure. It can be way better. Um, I think that my defense off of overheads, um, should be like there's no reason why it shouldn't be great like i can move really well i'm long i just don't i never emphasize that so to answer your question yesterday i had somebody hit like hard overheads at me and then we would just play the point out so i'm playing a point out against like a 5.8 duper half court skinny singles except they start the point with an overhead as hard as they can mm. and then we gotcha. play 11 so i have to work my way up and once we get to the kitchen it's money in the bank i'm, I'm gonna destroy the guy but i have to get there so I actually, I lost, um, heartbreaking loss. I lost like all four games, like 11, eight, 11, nine. But, uh, so anyway, we do that. We do a lot of defense. I'm working on the forehand flip in the middle. Um, I actually had a lot of success against Ben with that shot in mixed, um, against Ben and Anna Lee. I think I attacked Ben more than I attacked Anna Lee. And I just hold it in the middle, kind of like Dylan Frazier's wide forehand speed up. Uh, he'll hold it and then he'll bring it across the body, like to the right shoulder of the left side player in front of him. I'm doing the same thing, but I can actually either go to the right shoulder or to the middle or to the right shoulder of that left side player in front of me from the middle, or I'll just go full bag right at their chest. And I think that's something that the fact that I, I've always felt comfortable basically being in that holding position and then just going full bag and I can hit it hard. Um, that opens up a lot for me. Because from that position, I can generate a ton of power, just like my serve. You know, you see my serve, it's almost like I'm holding a forehand flip speed up. Like my serve is the smallest motion you've ever seen, but I'm hitting it hard. So being able to go full bag and then also flip that around has been huge for me. And again, like I'm killing, you know, 
local five fives and practice with it. So we'll see what it would actually happen <laughs> but, when you go up against Ben. Yeah. And, yeah. and a big difference too, James is initiating offense with your two handed backhand from the left cross court, almost impossible to do. Now, if you're putting the ball away cross court, whatever, that's all good. But when you are attacking from the middle with that forehand, you actually do have some reasonable options to attack the other left side player because you're much closer to them with your forehand than your backhand. So uh, I, I like creating some offense left to left, even though it does need to be uh, the forehand from the right sided player. So I, I, I like that quite a bit. And I mean, playing with Matt, where his backhand counter is so good, his hands are so good. I feel pretty comfortable initiating on the left side player most of the time, because if I go with the left side player, it'll either go right to Matt who's sitting back in, or I'm kind of there in the middle and I'm ready for either the, yeah, yeah. Matt is just it's gonna... like, lo it's like low, it's, it's low to high and he gets top spin on and it goes down. It's just so, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think, I think having Matt there too, that, that attack at the left side player is good. Um, so yeah, that, would be that. And I think um, more out of the air attacks, I think mixing up the speeds with out of the air attacks has been big for me. I've been doing it a little more often. Um, I think I like to go full bag out of the air with the forehand. I actually have a lot of success with that because I can hit it hard and I'll just, if it's out of the air, I'll just try to hit the guy. And I've been able to do that. But then with the backhand, I'm mixing up the pace more. It kind of feels natural to mix it up. So I'm doing that too. Yeah. I, I I love that. The, the full send, full bag, or full release on just a regular attack is great. But when you can put a wrinkle in it and, and kind of go mid pace or throw off the pace, I think that that is almost as effective as location as a lot of those heavy handed uh, counter attacking players will get real out in front uh, of that mid paced attack. And, and when you can go back and forth, uh, you really keep them off balance. So uh, I have been doing that with my forehand as well in the little bit of rec that I play. And uh, I, I think I've been, you know, getting some players that are just better than me with some of those uh, varieties of paces on the speed ups. For sure. Um, well, that's, that's great stuff. And we are going to end James with a little rapid fire questions here. Okay. Now you can think about your answer, but you can't think too long. Okay. You have to throw out an answer relatively quickly for these questions and let's just get right into it. Score of the match, two out of three games, you and I versus Annalie Waters and Catherine Parento. I think we would win. Are you, are you, were we assuming that you're not going to run out of gas? Like you're, you're in shape. That we'll, we'll say my, my, my skill is what it is in this moment. My fitness will allow me to play at the level I need to throughout the match. Yes. Okay. I think we win probably, probably four and four. Ooh, I don't think I have a problem. I was Atta built. Boy. I was built to play women's doubles. You know, it's funny. Like, if you like, I think this is actually. Um, I'll say this. I think me and you would beat Catherine and Anna Lee by a more significant margin. By by actually, I think it. I think we would beat them a lot worse than you and JW would beat them. Yeah, yeah, because you can you you can go more full alpha than J Dub, and I am very comfortable playing. 10 to 12 percent of the court so i i i see exactly what you're saying if you let's just for instance plug you and jw as in the exact same level i think in that specific situation i think you're a better partner for me than than, than jw yeah i think i'm better at women's than jw we'll see <laughs> there you go well this, this uh that was a little long-winded uh but a but a good answer nonetheless do you ever not shower after a practice session Oh, I always do. I always do. Oh, I, I sweat so much. It's like, if I don't shower, you'll know. I got it. Your physical looks one to 10. Tell me. I'd say I'm like a six. Personality one to 10. Six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. And this, this, this one could be long winded. Any odd superstitions that you have? Um, like on the court? No, I have no, like nothing. I'm, I'm my only superstition is that I have no superstitions. That I have Perfect. nothing. I'm just playing. Oh, I mean, Perfect. I guess it's no. I mean, is moving my feet like bouncing up and down? It's kind of. I mean, not really. I, I wouldn't put it as a superstition. That's just that's just you being you right there. If 
pickleball never found you, you never found pickleball, where would you be working? What would you be doing right now? Um, right now, I'd probably be, uh, so I just have graduated last year. I'd probably be in consulting, hating my life at some like below average firm because I got in trouble in school and I can't get a re really good job. I, I don't know. Nothing great. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't perfect be a dancer. Yeah, I wouldn't have coached like tennis or something. The level of Selkirk gear and paddles one to 10. 10. <laughs> He's the easiest answer on there. If you had to go to McDonald's, what would you order? Oh, I would get a salad because I'm a nerd and I just, everything there is so bad for you. It's what, like, what, what, what if you're cheat mealing? Come on, work oh, with me a little bit. Cheat meal. Yeah, cheat mealing. I would get a, uh, I would get a Big Mac. I actually like the Big Mac a lot. Um, it's just, it's just a high level, you know, piece of food. I think I would also get the fries, obviously mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> the fries mm -hmm. are good. It's funny. Cause I haven't had McDonald's sober, in, in the, you know, even when I was, I'm sober now, but back then I never had it. sober. I would only mm. have it when I was a little inebriated, which is funny. Cause that means I actually have no idea how good Mac McDonald's is. I think it's amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, big Mac. That's, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's the way to do it is drink. 1500 uh calories and then eat 1500 calories right after that's that's good for the body right there, James. <laughs> okay give me your exact chipotle order so it's white rice double chicken mm -hmm. no beans uh sour cream guacamole you know got these new contracts i'm getting the guac every time now mm -hmm. uh, we got mm -hmm. cheese and corn mm -hmm and i'll get a side of hot and i'll put some hot on it side of hot now that that chipotle hot is legit but it does not mess around if you if you overload it it, it can it can hurt you and i love spicy stuff so uh i'm a big fan of the hot on the side as well and the luscious lefty cj clinger double beans double chicken double guac that's it every single time so just yeah, he's he, he's a he's a real champion. You look, you, you're a little more diversified with your order, but both both orders are pretty quality. Is he getting that in a bowl? Oh yeah, he gets it in a bowl, and he That's literally, insane. I would say, he eats Chipotle twelve to twenty times a week. <laughs> literally, no, I'm I'm not joking. Somewhere in that range, right there. So, uh, oh my gosh, I actually would have I would have figured that he was doing something like that. That is hilarious. What a funny kid. He's a great, yeah, he, great player. He re he really is. He really is. Had had to work him in the uh, on the pod for sure. Well, James, that was we talked a little pickle, but that was a lovely episode. Getting a little more in tune uh, with uh, what you like to do off the court and your routines. And I think we are at a perfect time to to stop with this one at the thirty minute mark. And uh, yeah, the people got what they want today. Perfect. Thank you. If the people have any interest in my uh, routine, let me know. I don't know. Maybe maybe the maybe nobody's gonna watch. Like, I don't care about what James does. I want to hear his <laughs> routine. <laughs> well, well, we'll get at least I don't know a hundred people to view to view this episode, James, uh, with your personal routines. And don't forget about that virtual coaching, guys. Check it out. Yeah, virtual coaching. Perfect. Thank you. Sayonara. Sayonara.